In this presentation, we have the Gabriel Nibiru star that's coming in towards the Earth and has been known to the uh, astronomers since 1841 via a uh, shift in the orbits of the outer planets. Some uh, magnetic force was causing that, and they assumed it was planet X. We find, however, that uh, the position that uh, Gabriel Nibiru is going to take up is identified by the uh, other nine planets. And uh, we see an attempt to uh, remove that from uh, the knowledge of the Earth when uh, the uh, astronomers removed Pluto as being a star, reducing it from uh, eight, from nine to eight. And now we've got Nibiru coming in. We'll bring it back up to nine. But Pluto, of course, is still there, which is 10 in total. So we see why, once we go through the slide, they did that. Blatantly obvious. As said, Nibiru is the angel Gabriel. It was photographed by the infrared imaging satellite on October the 21st, 2003. There are other reports, however, 50 years ago of uh, very clear photographs of the, uh, the uh, iron star coming in. The wings are iron atoms given off by the powerful magnetic field. It is molten iron. The planet is portrayed in an ancient Akanaki mural in Babylon where the 10 planets plus the sun and moon, total 12, are depicted. We see from top left, rooting to the right, Neptune, Venus and Pluto. And you'll see the position uh, distances from the sun in the centre, which indicate that uh, Mercury is in its right position, Venus is slightly further out, the Earth and Moon slightly further out. Uh, then we have Nibiru, uh, then Mars, and um, we have Saturn, of course, Jupiter and Uranus, all marked out clearly there. I've uh, overlaid the Nibiru Gabriel in that position there to show that it's the, uh, counting from Mercury, the fourth out. Here's the actual photograph taken on uh, the 21st of October 2003. In the next slide, the positions of the planet show the 12 spheres and the approaching uh, Gabriel Nibiru and uh, how it will settle in uh, between the uh, Earth and Mars. And uh, it has its own planetary system. Seven planets orbiting it are the seven angels of Revelation. So when you back engineer the uh, book of Revelation, you can see that it is referring to Gabriel, who is the angel of God, because God has come to the earth. And as God has come to the earth, its angel follows. So the messages are angels and stars. As said, Nibiru is the angel Gabriel. It was photographed by the infrared imaging satellite on October the 21st, 2003. There are other reports, however, 50 years ago of uh, very clear photographs of the, uh, the uh, iron star coming in. The wings are iron atoms given off by the powerful magnetic field. It is molten iron. The planet is portrayed in an ancient Akanaki mural in Babylon, where the 10 planets plus the sun and moon, total 12, are depicted. We see from top left, rooting to the right, Neptune, Venus and Pluto. And you'll see the position uh, distances from the sun in the centre, which indicate that uh, Mercury is in its right position, Venus is slightly further out, the Earth and Moon slightly further out. Uh, then we have Nibiru, uh, then Mars, and um, we have Saturn, of course, Jupiter and Uranus, all marked out clearly there. Now, 
this is the principal reason why NASA built the Space Hubble, uh, which immediately uh, confirmed or rediscovered Planet X. Uh, its space images so detailed, the race was on to build underground bunkers where the elite would go into hiding, leaving the rest of mankind to be burned alive by Nibiru. And I should add that they are also trying to uh, ignite the surface of the Earth with a air bomb by uh, releasing uh, either a nuclear blast or bringing some asteroid in to hit the Earth to set off uh, all the gas fracking that's been done in the United States and Australia, which would uh, totally annihilate the Earth. There's also talk that they're trying to uh, set off a, a nuclear bomb. And of course, when we look at um, the uh, attempt that they made to um, give uh, rockets armed with nuclear warheads to Iran and they refused to take them. The idea was that they wanted to start a war with uh, Israel and the people in Israel, that don't matter at all to the uh, ruling elite. They are not Jews anyhow, they just think they are. And uh, the idea was to um, sacrifice them all anyhow. This is the idea of also of the double cross. The, the hands has been... Uh, crossed in the skull and bones tradition and can be seen on the British flags when the ships um, sail back into port they, they uh, fly the skull and bones so the, the crossed arms means double cross you can double cross anybody and anything so therefore the Jews who think they are doing it for their god Lucifer will be double crossed anyhow as will those above them which are the Zionists that um, think that they can escape uh, the coming judgment of uh, God by going underground, yet they will be locked underground and burnt alive uh, because Satan wants every human being dead, irregardless of what they believe in and whether they think it is God or not. It wants to get rid of all of the creation of Yahweh. So what the governments failed to um, comprehend fully that creation is all to do with numbers. However, their god Lucifer manipulates men to have their own ideas while hidden from them the devil. Lucifer is a real angel that cannot exist on the earth as a being, but only as a spirit. This is uh, evident in the uh, uh, Vedas of uh, the Hindi religion. It tells of a story of how the fallen angels were allowed to come back to the earth after the flood. For prior to the flood, they were able to come as angels and of course they then mated with women and produced this race of giants that had to be destroyed. So the angels were placed on the earth in human form as helps for mankind to educate man to realize Man was created in the image of God, Asherah, Yahweh. They were to bring all races into paradise via the twelve tribes of Israel. They, the youngest race in all of the world, which were Hebrew. The fallen angels in human form mated with the women and produced offspring that were continually evil, taking the earth for themselves. And as I said, the flood was necessary to eliminate the evil. And when we go into the Hindu text, it shows that uh, the raven flew off the ark and landed in Sri Lanka, Colombo. And um, if you go to India today, they will tell you that uh, no man was ever supposed to occupy Colombo, Sri Lanka, because they would become infected by the uh, demons and uh, this is actually what the case is today. We have the uh, the camel, is what they call themselves, uh, that are creating all sorts of havoc throughout India. So with the return of Nibiru Gabriel after an absence of 3,600 plus years, it arrives back and will take up the orbital position fulfilling the prophecy of the book of Revelation. Being a manifestation of the angel of God, Gabriel, bringing seven angels, which are planets that will restore the earth to paradise. This is the pouring out of the seven vials of the seven angels. Book of Revelation. 
All things are prophecy or prophetic, proven by the numbers of creation. The planets are drawn northward towards the Milky Way galaxy equatorial line at 69,000 kilometres per hour. This causes the planets to orbit and rotate on their axis. Now, Nibiru Gabriel with its seven planets is a molten iron, highly magnetic miniature sun. So it will have to fall into a position where it re will remain influencing the Earth, because this is where creation is, where all life is. And these are related to the planets uh, via their position in uh, an angular degree from the uh, uh, sun itself. So we are trailing behind the sun. All of creation is numbered. Therefore, each word has many methods of carrying a message. The name Jesus is 2424 in the Greek dictionary of the Bible. But in Greek geometria, the same number can be seen as 888. So 2424 is Jesus and so is 888 in geometria. We see then the positions of the nine planets, each have been observed by astronomers as follows. There are numbers written in the planets. So we do this this way. Calculating each of the planets' inclination to the equator of the sun, then add the nine planets together. The total in degrees is 56.4349995. Including the declassified planet Pluto, August the 24th, 2006. Its position is 11.88 degrees off the sun's ecliptic. It looks something like this. This is not showing the position of Nibiru, but as we count out, we've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, then you would have Mars moved out with Nibiru in between, then you'd have Jupiter, and I should remind you that Jupiter has also altered uh, dramatically in the last while with the one of the uh, bands in the lower part of the planet is now missing. We have uh, Saturn which shows a hexagonal uh, north pole in the clouds. Uh, which is to do with the 19.5 degree um, latitudes, which form uh, pyramid-shaped, triangular pyramid shapes. And then we've got uh, Neptune and uh, Uranus and uh, Pluto on the very outer rim. Now, the numbers are, this is in degrees, 3.38 for Mercury. 3.86 for Venus, which is in Greek means immortality. Earth is 7.155. Mars is 5.65. Jupiter, 6.09. Saturn, 5.51. Uranus is 6.48. Neptune, 6.43. And Pluto, 11.88. At all numbers, we have 56.435. We then average the nine planets by dividing into the 56.435 and we end up with 6.2705555. So what do we see? An average of the nine planets equaling 6.2705555. The word Christ is found in the New Testament 555 times in 521 verses. We need 10 planets because everything in the universe is synchronistic placed on the fact that we have 10 fingers and toes. That's why you have them. So we need 10 planets. Therefore, we must have some form of synchronicity. So we add the average 6.2705555 to the total of the nine planets, 56.435, and we have 62.705555. So all we've done, basically, is proven that uh, the missing orbit and inclination, if you like, of Nibiru, Gabriel, must be 
that number. For the total would then be the same number as the average, 62.705555, which is a total amazing uh, demonstration of uh, synchronicity of creation. So we've averaged the nine planets, 6.2705555. That equals 56.435. We have 62.705555 when we add the 6.2705555 to the 56.435. Now, what we have then is a number, 627. 627 is assemblies and it's uh, found here and it's saying the word or words, 1697. 697 is Marshall in Greek. One is, of course, Alpha or Father. So the words of the wise are as goads. To goad something is to push it into position. As a shepherd, you might say, moves sheep. And as nails fastened, then it becomes fixed in that spot. So that means the orbit is then fixed. By the masters of assemblies, and the word assembly is only found in the Old Testament once, and it's numbered 627, which are given from one, and this is the shepherd. In fact, um, we can see in uh, Saturn, in the rings, that there are shepherding um, asteroids floating about, which cause uh, all sorts of uh, odd occurrences in the uh, formation of the rings. So as I said, the uh, number 627 is only found once. And uh, I'll read it now. Uh, the word of God compelled by goading the planets into a fastened place by the master of assemblies, which is the command of the one shepherd, planet Nibru Gabriel. I've added planet Nibru Gabriel. We see then that uh, this is the shepherd that's going to uh, cause the solar system to uh, readjust to the new magnetic influence. But we also see that the New World Order had removed Pluto, and uh, it is, because we can backtrack and go into the astronomy program, and find that its position is 11.88, and we see why. It is Psalms 118.8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. The word Lord here is the Almighty and is the eighth word of the psalm. That psalm has a value of 629. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Now the number 629 means to pay the ransom in full. This is for mankind's fall, following, if you like, the uh, dominance of evil from the fallen angels. So mankind has to be redeemed for their sin. And this is the idea of what the cross was all about. It's all codes. So, uh, you can understand that the deliverance and redemption is all to do with Lord Jesus Christ, myself, in 33 AD. Now, here's another drawing here. We can take the average uh, divided by 8, and we have 5.569375. That is when you take Pluto out of the equation. It gives a number of 44.555. We have the Christ number again, and 44 the year I was born. So it gives us a new total of 50.124377. So what does this number mean? How can astronomers downgrade a planet to a dwarf planet? Then what is a dwarf planet? In 2006, when it was declassified by the International Astronomical Union, the IAU, which was formed that same year as the authority over such things, we go back in time to Clyde Tombaugh, 
who first discovered it on January the 21st, 1930. This is 76.59 years until the date it was declassified, August the 24th, 2006. The number 7659 is Shib which is Hebrew and means seven times, which is the sacred number, of course. That is one of the reasons why they disclassified it. Now, Pluto has four moons, yet was downgraded to a brown dwarf. 76.59 years is 3886.2 weeks and means to stay permanently. The name Pluto means Hades, Revelation 2014. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. We see then in this celestial chess match, I wait until they make a move and then they are checkmated. It's only when all of the 10 planets total 62.70555, which is a number determined by the average for the nine planets, not including the new position for Nibiru. So we have the same number when we divide by 10, that is divide the nine by 10. We have 6.270. 555, an absolute mathematical impossibility unless the solar system was created to include Nibru Gabriel in the beginning. Well, when we add that number to the previous nine planet totals, we still have 62.70555, the same number, and 555 is a number for Christ. The declassification of Pluto is a conspiracy to eliminate the future position of Nibiru, Gabriel, into an orbit around the Sun outside the orbit of the Earth. Therefore, we can now reveal it is, or well, Pluto, Hell, Hades, and the number seven, and it is to remain permanently in astronomy. Venus at 3.86 degrees off the sun ecliptic is the Greek word for immortality and is the morning star given Christ representing the wife of God, humankind. Therefore, Revelation 22.16 is, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So what we see then is a synchronicity of creation that these numbers are so perfect that the odds of them being chance are extraordinarily difficult to calculate, but it would be in the trillions to one. This is the source of the information, uh, it's wiki source. When you repeat that calculation and add Pluto, which as I said was reclassified from a planet by the elite in 2006, this is the source of the information, uh, it's wiki source, and we then go through the numbers again, Mercury 3.38, 3.86. One five five point six five. So we end up with an average of six point two seven zero five 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 with only Pluto back in the equation. The number seven zero five in that equation is in Greek arithmio, and it means to count the number. So it then becomes blatantly obvious that uh, the number 555 is also in the equation and that, of course, is what the Bible is all about. Without the Christ, you have nothing. So 
So the arrival of Gabriel Nibru has been known for a very long period of time. And it's the shepherd that manoeuvres the nine planets into the perfect position for paradise upon the earth. The seven planets are the seven angels of the book of Revelation and that uh, pour out the vials upon the earth. So the uh, Gabriel Nibru will swing into an orbit around the sun. Then the Revelation prophecy will end with Revelation 21, 23. And the city had no need of the sun. The point here is no need. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It's just no need of it. Neither of the moon. The moon controls uh, the uh, reproduction of the earth. To shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So the Lamb is Yahweh come to the earth as the Christ. So we just repeat that, and the city had no need of the sun or moon, meaning it is still visible, but the dominating factor will be Gabriel Nibiru, a new paradigm that will re-establish immortality for the deserving meek. They, the victims of the devil, manifest within the elite of mankind to set upon a world to destroy it with numerous plots to cause all on the surface of the earth to be burned alive. The uh, elite that's putting this all together and spending trillions of dollars to do it all have no idea until I told them that they are going to get burnt alive because the devil, Lucifer, is trying to be God. And the only way it can be God is to get rid of everything that is of God, which is human beings. The maiden man and woman is made in the image of God, Asherah and Yahweh. So the servants of Lucifer, of the devil, have scurried underground to escape Gabriel and the, un and the upcoming Holocaust that they are causing. They fear Gabriel that's going to burn them alive. That's not what it is. The reality is Lucifer wants its loyal servants dead as well, as said, for reg regardless of their satanic worship and faith in Lucifer, they are still human beings made in the image of God and it must be eliminated. God within you is what it's all about. In fact, only one man in history that I have read about was Adolf Hitler, who said, God is within you. You can't be a Christian and a German at the same time, because God is within the German people. So regardless of race or religion, the Zionists are behind it all, and at this level, yet I am, with compassion upon their insanity, predicted and warned their underground bunkers, which are extermination bunkers, intended to terrify them, burn alive their children while they are comatose, unable to move, yet totally aware of what they are about to endure or witness. Uh, Denver International Airport which is in reality a concentration death facility, makes it possible for planes to fly in the elite from all over the country and uh, other countries straight into uh, Denver, where they will never come back. Men will be forced to watch as their little children suffer unimaginable horrors, then their wives and finally themselves. It was King Zedekiah, the last king of Jerusalem, that was taken captured by Nebuchadnezzar, who had installed him 11 years earlier, but he rebelled against him and did not take the advice of Jeremiah the prophet, who was his grandfather. And his four sons were killed before his eyes, and then he was blinded and then dragged to Babylon where he died in a prison. In Matthew 13:30, it says, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tars, and bind them in bundles to burn them. That is, taking them themselves into the underground facilities. But gather the wheat into my barn, which is the earth. 